ignition, kill switch, put on a bit of choke. First of all, get these screws out of the sides. Trying to lose these. And then, always get this magneto flywheel off as well. So I've got the clutch cable still attached. Shouldn't need to take that off. Right, so next thing is to disconnect the leads on the battery. If I point my camera up here, I'm just gonna disconnect those then we're going to take off the, uh, disconnect the neutral switch from behind here on the stator. Yeah, then we should be able to um, get to the cam chain. Drop this old one down and out. New one on. And then hopefully we'll be uh, ready to start reassembling. What I need to do now is use my tool in my left hand here to hold this flywheel still. And at the same time, I need to get this bolt to start undoing. She does not want to do. Gotcha. There we go. Oh. Got our crankshaft bolt here. Considering this is what we were turning the engine over with earlier, of course it was going to be in pretty tight. There we go. Now, there's a bigger thread in this cover. It's quite a small thread here. Apparently I need a special tool to pull this cover off the crankshaft. That special tool is basically just an 18mm bolt. Which turns out I've got here is my very special crankshaft pulling tool, also known as the sump plug from an old Alfa Romeo. And that should, in theory, I'll just check the thread, all looks good, it should be the same diameter in pitch. That just goes onto there, and it's bigger than the diameter of the crankshaft. So as I screw it in, it pushes the crankshaft that way. That's not going anywhere, so instead it'll pull this thing over here, if all goes well. My tool gone. Drop my tool, there we go. Holding tool once more. All right, so a little bit of gentle persuasion with the old hammer, not on this directly, but on the, on the thread to uh, pull this off has done the trick. Just loosen that. That felt a little bit like the spy who loved me then when old Roger Moore's got to try and get the, the nuclear warhead out of the torpedo without the magnets touching. I mustn't touch it with any part of the detonator. What happens if you do? It'll go off. But obviously nothing went bang, so it's all good. Right, so the screws are out. I put two M8 bolts into these threaded holes to pull it out with. These are actually the engine mount bolts from the top. I uh, need to get this rubber grommet piece out here. Oh, there we go. That's why they said to put a oil pan underneath. But yeah, so now I need to just drop this, get this plate off, drop this chain down, get the new chain on, reverse everything, cylinder head back on. All right, so we've got the uh, new cam chain on, held in place up here with this cable tie. I don't want it to kink at the bottom there. Uh, now I just need to get the stutter back onto the case, get the cover back onto that not forgetting the Woodruff key which goes into the crankshaft here, this little sort of half moon shape, but you can't see that. Oh, it's focused, there we go. Um, that just makes sure everything's all aligned nicely and uh, nothing starts spinning without anything else. That's sort of the easy bit really, it shouldn't be too bad. And then um, after that we'll get the head back on and we should be right. Hopefully this tapping noise will have gone away. Right, so now I'm going to put the flywheel cover on. I'm going to clean it up with a bit of um, solvent cleaner first, like contact cleaner. And then this little groove, you can see inside this, uh, the inner bit here, a little groove there. That's got to line up with a little groove on the crankshaft, which slot this tiny half moon shaped bit in first. And I've got to try and slot very carefully the Flywheel thing here, the cover 
on top of it. There we go. Hold that there. Have to get this started up for now before switching to my torque wrench so that I uh, don't over tighten it because we don't want that. There we go. Right, so that's the, um, the magneto back on the engine, new cam chains on. Um, I've not put the top end on yet. It's getting later in the evening. I'm really hungry. I've ordered the pizza. Gonna go and collect it and I'll uh, carry on tomorrow. Right, so now I've got this engine cover back on. Need to check the gap between the pickup coil here for the ignition and the magneto cover is about right. My filler gauge needs to be between 0.8 and 1.2 mil. So 0.8 here. I've turned this to the advanced timing mark around here, so it's a little bit before we get to the top dead center mark. Mark 0.8 easily goes through, I think it's gonna be way too far. And then these two sandwiched together make about 1.2. All that goes in a bit easy as well. So I better tighten that up just a little bit and uh, make sure our pickup coil can get close enough to the, uh, to the magneto cover here, otherwise we're not gonna get a very good spark. Right, so now we've gotta get the some of these old rubber bits off here. We've got the head gasket I've just taken off. Got these rubber gaskets here for the cam chain void and these oil passageways. Might as well replace these. I've got a whole gasket set anyway. Okay, now I've got to thread this cam chain up through the cylinder head without dropping it down the block, which should be a good laugh. Right, so here's the fun bit. Now I've got to try and get this cylinder head onto the block without dropping my nice cam chain down the shaft. Get my thumb through there. I can't afford to lose a little bit of tension at this point in the cam chain. There we go, that is now nice and in line. Okay, I'm gonna wedge that with a screwdriver so I can't lose my uh, cam chain down there. Now I'm gonna put the bolts back in and then we go around tighten them in a diagonal order. So it's one, two, three, four. Tighten them up fairly loose and then go around again with the, the proper torque measurements. So they'll be nice and tight then. Um, other than that, I'll get a bit of oil up to these uh, rockers and valves and whatnot uh, nice and early, just rather than wait for the oil to be fed up by the pump. Right, without any further ado, time to get the camshaft, the new one. Notice lack of gouges and uh, other nasty bits. Time to get this into the cylinder head. Then it's the matter of somehow getting the, the sprocket on the top with the chain on it all in line without having to move this around too much. This side of the chain should be taut. This side needn't be because we'll have our chain tensioner in here to tighten it up. Try and get as close as I can the right teeth first go with this sprocket. Otherwise it's a matter of jiggling things around. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to be honest. Two ways to do the hip bikes, KZ200, not this bike, KL250, this bike, so I want it to go on upright like that. Let's find a way of doing this without dropping the cam chain down the, uh, down the void, because we don't want that. Try not to obscure what I'm doing too much, you might want to see if you're watching the video. It's difficult to do without chopping your fingers off, it turns out, even nearly in line. No, I am at least a tooth out, if not more. And now I've gone too far the other way. Ah, that is bang on, actually. I can hold this crankshaft steady. That looks to be about spot on. Fantastic. Where has my 14mm socket gone? Where's it gone? Oh no, 14mm span will do. Right, this is bang on. Top dead centre at the bottom, top dead centre at the top. Perfect. Before, it was half a tooth on the top, out. So changing that was the right thing to do. Excellent. So now, time to tighten all these nuts up. Oil the top end, we can adjust the valve clearance. All right, so the next step is to uh, correct the valve clearance. So on the exhaust side at the front here, we've got quite a bit of movement here. When the engine's at top dead center and nice and cold, obviously things expand as they get hot. 
there should be a certain gap uh, there. So within a certain tolerance, that should be okay. Same for the uh, for the intake. Typically, the the exhaust's a bit higher tolerance because it gets a lot hotter, and so it expands more, and that means then that. Uh, Obviously, if your clearance is too tight, then things don't open properly and things can drag a bit and, and all that sort of thing. Um, typically, a too big clearance isn't so bad. It's just a bit more tappy, a bit louder. On the exhaust, we want between 0.17 and 0.22 millimeters. So I'll get my feeler gauges out. Easily going in there. So I want to just uh, tighten this up a little bit. We do it. Now the tricky part is doing up the lock nut without losing the, uh, the calibration I just set. There's a good chance but I kind of tightened it up, the other gone out of kilter. I'm gonna have to do it again, but we'll see. Hello. All right, so that's the valve clearances nice and adjusted, inlet and the exhaust both done. And now before I put these covers on here, I'm just going to get a bit of uh, standard engine oil. I'm just going to get a bit of oil around here because when I start the engine, it'll take a while for the oil feed to get up from the bottom end. So I uh, don't want these things scraping against each other too much. So I'll just uh, give a bit of a top up, just get it sort of everywhere really. It'll just spray around the top end all over the place. So there's no harm in, uh, in putting some oil up here. Get some on the cam chain. That will dribble down nicely. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Alright, so at long last we now have a reassembled Kawasaki KL250. All that needs to be done now, so I've got the, the carb on, all connected to the airbox, tanks on, fuels all connected, top ends back on, all of that's all good. I'm going to check the oil level, see if we've lost any when we took this side panel off, that side cover off rather. Um, but I don't imagine we've lost much, so if I need to, I'll top that up. And then, uh, otherwise, yeah, just give it a start. Yeah. Right, it's finally back together. Finally outside, let's try and give it a start. Okay, fuel is on. I'll give it a moment to get through into the carb. And then, ignition, kill switch. Spark plug connected. We're in neutral. Put on a bit of choke. Let's try a full choke. Right there. Almost. Give it a moment just to warm up a little bit on the choke. A little bit of smoke, but I think it's just where things that have been covered in a little bit of grease or oil during reassembly, it'll just burn off. 